Today's topic, the sunk cost fallacy. It can cost you big bucks and we'll discuss it starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Ted Michaelis, welcome back. It's your first appearance here during Financial Literacy Month. Financial Literacy uh, Month. Yes. A, you know, we celebrate it every yeah, year. Yeah, we do. It's it's just, well before Christmas, it's Financial Literacy Month. And we're going to talk about some behavioral economics. So today's topic is the sunk cost fallacy. Right. Which is something I actually talk to like at least one person a week uh, about, although I never call it that. Right. But it is important to understand, so you're going to explain it. So let's start with what is a sunk cost. Right. The money's already gone. You've spent the money on whatever it is, so you can't get the money back. There you go. Thanks for watching, people. That, oh, no. We <laughs> Show's gotta, we, over. We're going to we, talk about more? we got to get to the fallacy part of it. So All you're right. right. Money that has been spent and can't be recovered. It's gone. it's gone. Okay. So let's do some examples then. So off the top of your head, and we'll get into a bit more detail on this, but what are some examples of sunk costs? Uh, you you've paid the rent for the month. It's gone. They're can't, not likely to give it back. Can't get it back. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I guess that a lot of stuff you spend money on. Right. Pretty much anything you buy that you can't turn around and, and resell. either resell or return. It, food. That'd be another good example. Once you've eaten it, yep. And I mean, you and I are both uh, CPAs, chartered accountants, and so this is something we see in the business world all the time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say our professional fees. <laughs> yes. <But>, uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's probably true too. R and D, marketing, payroll. Yep. Uh, those are things that you you spend them and then they're gone. Um, I mean, sometimes even things like equipment where you buy the equipment and, well, I can't really resell it. It's a special use thing. It can only be right. used in this particular business yep. and I can't recover it. So um, why are we having this discussion then? Like what's the So the sunk the cost here? fallacy is I've spent the money, so now I've got to keep reinvesting in this thing that's already, it's gone. So I don't know what's an example. Well, one we were talking about before the show. Signed my kid up for piano lessons. Had to pay for the year in advance. It's three months into it. She's not practicing. It's a waste of money. Well, so I could beat her about the head to make her, and I don't really do that, folks. Figuratively Please, speaking. Don't call it. Yeah, don't tweet us. I don't. I, I can try and convince her that this is what she really wanted to do, but she doesn't want to do it. And so, I mean, there's there's no value. It's a sunk cost. I got to, I, do I keep pushing this this rock up the hill? Or do you cut your losses and move on? And do something more productive, more and useful, that, less offensive to everybody. And that's and that's it. So yeah. you keep spending money and that can make it worse. Uh, money, time, effort. Those right? are the three. Money, time, and effort. Okay, so you know, I go to a restaurant, I order a bunch of food. Well, I better finish every last thing on my plate. Because, because it costs for it. less if you don't eat yeah, it all. Exactly, right? right. You get a deal. And this is the sunk cost fallacy. It's, right. it's already gone. Now, the most common example I see, and I'm sure you see this as well, and this is why I say I talk to my clients about this literally every week, yep. is a car. Okay. So they, if you're approaching a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal and you have a car that has a loan against it or a lease. Right. The discussion is always, well, do you want to keep it or not? Because right. you can go bankrupt or file a consumer proposal and keep your car that has a loan or a lease against it so long as you keep making the payments. Right. And so the typical client I talk to says, well, I've been paying on it for two years. It's almost at the point where I've paid. No, you're nowhere near the point where it's paid off. And that's why you got to actually do the math. And so... When I go, well, I mean. And, well, what makes it worse? So most of our clients, when they finance a car, they've traded in their old car. So they've rolled in the shortfall from their last loan, and they're now paying interest on debt for a car they don't have anymore. So it's not just that they've got the sunk cost of the current car. They've got the sunk cost from the last car. And at some point, it'd get really ridiculous. We should have called this the really big sunk cost That's policy right. then. Yep. And so let's do some math here. We're just going to make up numbers. Yep. Okay, because it's a podcast, right? So it's it's not all completely real here. Kind of like these mugs we've got that actually don't have any water in them. They're, they're, <laughs> they're props for the show here. Right. So you come in to see me, and exactly what you just described has happened. So I had a previous car. There was still 5000 bucks owing on it, but I bought this, bought this new one. And so now I owe a bunch of money on the vehicle. I'm trying to decide should I keep it or not. If I'm filing a proposal, I can hand the car back. I owe nothing. Whatever the shortfall is gets included in the proposal. But I've been paying for two years. Right. I don't want to. So when I go through the math, well, how, so how do you explain that? How do you do that well, decision for something? So it's pretty simple. What do you think the car is worth? Uh, Ten grand. All right. And how much do you still owe on the car? Twenty. Okay. Does it make sense to pay $20,000 for something that's worth ten? Don't think about this that I've been making payments for two years. Today, if I wanted to sell you this car today, 
I've got one. I'll sell you for twenty thousand dollars. It's worth ten. You gonna buy it? Uh, no. Short answer. I think no. you just answered the question. Now it's so that's the the big number. The littler numbers are each month. Right. If I give up the car. I don't have to pay the lease payment or the loan payment anymore. I don't have to pay insurance. I don't have to pay gas. Now, I still have to get around. So, But let's assume then you're going to go out and get a car. And you get the exact same car from another dealer. But now you're buying it for 10000 bucks Because that's what it's worth. So, okay, I'm not paying the 10000 or the interest on the 10000 So even though I'm still making a payment, it's half what it used to be. So the key point is it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. Right. It's what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, you want to think back to the Lion King. The monkey hits the... Simba on the head with a stick. Yeah, my it kids, means nothing my to you. My kids are older than you, so I don't know about the Lion King. So we'll <laughs> we'll do another podcast on that with with people who actually understand. That what joke you're doesn't work. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, well, everyone else there probably understood it. So right. So a car is is an obvious example. The other obvious example is a house. Well, actually, I I think the most obvious example is a business. Okay, so but, let's talk about well, let's talk let's about a house. house, and then we'll talk about a business. So a house is well, okay, I've been living in it for X number. I've I've been paying the mortgage for all these years. Right. Now, this has not been a big issue recently, like over the last 10 years, because houses keep going up and up. Right. But now that they're leveling off and in some markets perhaps easing off, yep. uh-oh, uh, it doesn't matter what you paid for the house. Right. Again, sunk cost, doesn't matter what you've done on rentals, all the rest of it. Well, and yeah, have you refinanced it a couple of times? The, the, the real question for a house at the end of the day is, how much are you paying for the utility of the house? So if you're... If you've got a house that's worth $400,000 and you've somehow managed to mortgage it for $500,000, this shouldn't be a difficult decision. I know you love your house, your kids love their schools, but you're paying an extra hundred grand for something that hopefully one day will be worth that money again. Doesn't make any sense. And whether it's a car or a house, I always say to people, okay, let's compare apples to oranges here, apples right. to apples, whatever. So if you got rid of the car, how would you get to work? What would it cost? Right. And in Toronto, a lot of people say, well, I cars parked all week long anyway. They can't drive in Toronto. It costs too much. It's too right. slow. I take the subway, whatever. Okay, so you wouldn't really be losing much getting rid of the car. Right. Now, in a place like Kitchener or Guelph or somewhere where you're much more car-centered, yep. okay, maybe there's a, a bit of a decision there. It's the same with a house. Well, if I gave up my house and stop paying the mortgage and all the rest of it, I still need a place to live. What would that cost me? Right. And so if your mortgage payment is 2000 bucks a month and you got property taxes and maintenance- I'm sure this is in your book somewhere. The uh, Is it in the book? <laughs> we haven't plugged the book yet. We Straight talked talk about houses your money. in the book. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely in there. So uh, everyone uh, everyone can go grab a copy and they'll know. The The point is compare compare the numbers. Right. And you'll see that yeah. it, it doesn't make sense in and a lot of cases. And keep an open mind. So I mean, the, the problem we have with all these decisions that people are making is that they're I've been doing this thing, I'm on the treadmill, I just keep running on the treadmill as opposed to, wait a minute, maybe I should be doing this differently. Ah, uh, that is in the book. You're, we <laughs> use emotions to make decisions rather than actually looking at the I thought that's why we're numbers. doing this whole buffer, the, uh, behavioral economics thing. It is, that. there you go, good point. So we are, we are talking about that. Now you said that you think the best example would be a business. Yes, so I see this all the time. So somebody who operates their own business, they're yep. self-employed. They, they figure they're losing money every day that they're open but they can't see a way to the forest for the trees. So I, I can't close, I've got the rent to pay, I've got all these suppliers to pay, I've got people on staff. So the first question I asked them is, well, okay, so ignore the business for a second. If it closed tomorrow, what would you do instead? Would you end up being a greeter at Walmart? Would you, do you have some sort of skills that are marketable and in demand right now? How much would somebody pay you per hour to do what you're capable of doing? Are you making that money in the business? The answer is almost always no. Yeah, And so, the whole purpose of our meeting is to figure out how do you get away from these sunk costs? How do you break that mindset that I just got to keep riding this treadmill and to let's get a new paradigm, let's find a new plan for you going forward. You will be so much happier. Yeah, in a lot of cases I've said to people, well, you're you're not really making any money in the business. You keep right. getting more and more debt. You could literally be a greeter at Walmart making minimum wage and you would be making more money than what you're making now. You'd be better off. It's a but you're right. It's it's getting that in your mind because I've been working so hard and I thought this right. business was going to work. It's really hard to switch gears and and start yeah. over. I mean, I guess another kind of trite example would be things like appliances. Yeah. Well, I've had the washing machine for 5 years and I've already repaired it twice. I don't want to throw it away now because I've just spent all that money on it. Right. And that's, again, the exact wrong way to look at it. Yep. Because it's a, it's a sunk cost. The money's already gone. It doesn't matter. Now, I want to give you an example that's a little more nuanced than that. And okay. that would be a job. Yep. Okay. So I've been working at the same job, let's say, for five years. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, you and I have been at the same job for 20, so this this is not an example that applies to us. We're we're essentially unemployable, we're stuck. which is, which is right. why we're here. So I've been at the same job for a, a period of time, and I don't really like it. I'm right. not advancing. I'm not getting raises. I don't really get along with the boss and my coworkers and all the rest of it. But I've been there for a period of time. You know, I'm I'm part of the the company RSP plan, the company pension plan. And, you know, better the devil I know than the devil I don't. But that's a sunk cost, right? What I've already put into it. How do you make the decision on whether it's time to move on career wise? Yeah. I mean, we ask that question to people all the time. It's the, why are you doing that? Well, because I've always done that. Right? Well, if you stay with that mindset, let's say, what, what's, I'm trying to think of something now. The insanity, the definition is doing the same thing yep, over and over again, Albert expecting Einstein, a different yep. result, right? Yep. Yep. It doesn't work. So, what we're talking about here is a, it's a subtle difference. So this is a sunk cost that you probably don't recognize that there's money involved. It's an emotional decision you've made. I'm spending time at this. I'm spending effort at this. But it's not the most productive use of your time or your effort. There's probably something better. And school would be another example. Yeah. I mean, you gave the piano ex lesson example. But maybe I've enrolled in a course or a, a program at college or university or whatever. And, you know, clearly this isn't for me. Right. Do I finish the whole thing to get the diploma or degree that's of no use to me? Or do I bail now? Well, it's not a simple decision. No. But it's a decision that you've, you've got to think through. And you shouldn't be afraid of it. I mean, the, the real issue, most people will, will take these decisions that are awkward or uncomfortable and they'll just push them off. So you keep doing the same thing over and over again because it's working, sort of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, and it's the fear of the unknown. Like, yeah. I'm not going to quit my crappy job if I don't have anything to go to. Right. That, that would, would kind be of be a disaster, right? Yep. So, but if I'm stuck in this crappy job, I should not be saying to myself, I've been here for a long time, so therefore I got to stay. I think, okay, start actually looking for something new. Right. You know, what else can well, you do? Imagine yourself doing something different and then try to put a plan together to get there. Yeah, and it may take some time and you, maybe you got to keep this job while you're doing it. Right. But if you don't get started well, on it. And so now tie it back to people with, with people and money, right? It's, again, you're stuck in that job because it's paying your bills. Well, maybe you need a way to rethink how you're spending your money will give you the liberty to rethink the way mm -hmm. you're earning the money. That's a very good point because I can't quit my job because I got all these payments to make every month. Right. Okay, well, if you end up with so much debt that you can't service it and, okay, I'm going to file a proposal, get my cost down, well, then that frees up the opportunity right. to, to look at other things. Right. And and that's something you got to you gotta think about. So, okay, lots of examples of the sunk cost fallacy. Hopefully, people people get it. Now, you already hit on the three problems right time money and wow well, those those are the two ones i guess time right. money and effort so mm -hmm. i'm wasting time that i could be spending on something else right your daughter's piano lessons well now she can go and take jujitsu or whatever it is yes she's, that's a good she, idea jujitsu <laughs> um i don't know what that is but it sounds cool <laughs> money of course is the biggest one and right. i mean we the term money pit replies to a house yep um but a car Mm -hmm. You know, once a car gets to a certain age, everything needs to be replaced on it. Right. Are you better off keeping just, it or, or moving on? I think the third one, though, is that you become more passive. Yeah. So this is more of a karma type thing, though, that, well, I've been here forever. Well, I keep doing the same old thing. And I keep doing the same old thing. So yep. you got to be aware of, of all those th uh, all those three things. So let's end with practical advice because okay. that's what we do here. Um, and... Again, I know people are listening to this going, okay, well, you're, what you're really saying is people are irrational, that, um, you know, I, I keep my car, my job, my house, whatever, just because emotionally I've got some tie to it. And yeah, that's exactly what we're saying. Path of least resistance plays into this too, but that's your passivity. Yeah, right? yeah <clears throat> and that's exactly right. And so um, what then is your advice for somebody who is perhaps stuck in this sunk cost fallacy where they think they have to keep going on the, the path that they're on, what uh, what tips can you throw out there? All right. Well, you need to recognize that the opportunities in your life to, to exercise these thoughts. But the, the first one is always to make a plan. So identify something that maybe you're doing that you should be reconsidering and then make a plan to how could you do it better. And that can be the education. It can be the job. It can be the car. It can be the appliance. All of these things are, this is what I'm doing. Am I doing this just because I've always done it? Or is there an opportunity here to improve the way I'm spending my time, my effort, and my money? And you actually have to sit down and think that through then. Right. So, But 
it's not an impossible task. No, and you and you know when we say it like this, it sounds like okay, I got to sit down next week and I got to write this big note and do these things. No, you can compartmentalize this. So the next time you think about buying something, spending money, figure out okay, does this make sense? Am I repairing an old item that I'm going to have to keep repairing? Am I buying a new item that I'm never going to use? Could I rent this thing instead? Should I? I mean, there are all sorts of different aspects of this, but you can apply it on a micro level as opposed to the grand scheme of things, and it's easier to deal with. Yeah, and so with a car, okay, how much am I spending on my car now? Right. And what are my alternatives? Mm -hmm. And so you gave the example, well, buy a $10,000 car instead of a $20,000 car. I mean, that maybe is easier said than done, but... Uh, but the example was, I owe $20,000 on my $10,000 car. Yeah. So if I'm going to drive a $10,000 car, go out and buy a $10,000 car. Right. And obviously, you got the shortfall <clears throat> to deal with, which is what we already talked about. But right. there are there are ways to deal with that. So, okay, so so planning ahead is, you know... It makes know, sense, make, right? Making a plan. Yep. Um, and then, you know, before you spend money, exactly. Certainly when you're repairing something, that's yep. that's the obvious one. Do I really want to keep repairing it or yeah. is, it, is it better off? Now... I have a snowblower at home that is, I don't know, 20 years old. It's worth repairing because they don't make them like that anymore, you right. know? Um, whereas the new ones that are made of, I don't know, plastic or whatever they're made well, of. They're coming from perhaps some location across the there seas. There you go. That that may <laughs> may not be. And I guess maybe it's it's the same with cars. A really old car is pretty cheap to fix. No, but not anymore. Not anymore, <laughs> eh? It's not worth it. So that's the point. But again, the point is you gotta actually crunch the numbers and right. see so yep. that you can so that you can decide. Now, money, and then you also talked about time, because right. that's the other big component to this, right? So the, any rule you apply to whether or not you spend money, you can apply that same rule to a spending time. Does it make sense? Are you spending your energies in a way that's constructive, that's useful? Is it the best use of your time? Because, you know, what is it? You can Money can buy anything except for more time. Mm -hmm. that's 20, you, 24 hours a day. We you, all get the same you thing. You got what you got. You got to use it wisely. Yeah, and like I personally don't change the oil in my car myself. Right. I mean, you probably do, but but I don't. I don't change the oil in your car. Ever. <laughs> That's right. He's never he's <laughs> never touched my car. So now I know how to do it. I've done right. it before. And when I was younger, we had the little ramp things. But it doesn't make sense for you to do it. Doesn't make sense because right. you can go to one of these places and it costs you know a, a small amount of money. Now, right. if I really loved changing the oil, then maybe that would be a good use of my time. Right. And there's a lot of things that fall into that same category. Sure. That I don't, don't do my own dental surgery either. I right. guess I could. I, could well, I use that them. example for people running small businesses. So it's do what you're good at and pay people to do the stuff that you mm -hmm. can't stand that's detracting from your business. Yep. But again, so you've only got so much time. Use it wisely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, here at Hoy's Michaelis, we have a payroll service that does all the payroll stuff. And we've had that for 20 years since we had like three employees. Because right. for me to hand write a paycheck and do all the calculations, it's not a good use of my time, given what it costs to have someone else do it. So can right. you can you outsource something and, and free up your time? Intelligently. So, intelligently. That's the that's right. the key. Um, and then what other final advice have you got there? Well, so learn from your mistakes. I mean, um, good judgment is based on experience. Experience is based <laughs> on bad judgment. So go. when something goes wrong, file that away. Okay, don't do it again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and you know, was there something I repaired when I should have just gotten rid of it, gotten something new? If, right. Is there something I've got that well, I don't even did it? Should I gone out to Walmart and bought that cheap piece of crap when I really needed the item that was twice as much that'll last me for twenty years, yeah. like your old snowblower? Yeah, that's a that's a key point, and I understand yep. maybe I can't afford the the high tech you know the snowblower, good the good one. Yep. But then at least you should understand that this is a disposable item I'm buying. Right. Disposable means I'm not going to be able to keep repairing it. But yeah, I think I think that's a classic example where we, yep. for a couple of extra bucks, you could have got something that would have lasted a lot longer. Right. Um, but there are some things that maybe you should just buy the the cheapest version. Well, the yeah. t-shirts I wear in the summer, they're only going to last for a year. I'm not buying the right. fanciest ones. Yeah, the kids outgrow their stuff in two months. You know? Yeah. So why are you buying the the greatest stuff ever if you're if right. you're going to be tossing it? So there you go, the sunk cost fallacy. So basically, summarize it for us. It's um, it's really time and money that you're right that you're wasting if you don't uh, if and you don't. So always take the take the time to figure out whether or not the time and money are being spent wisely. Just don't keep doing something because that's the way you've always done it. That's the key. Don't keep doing something because that's the way you've always done it. So there you go. We had a nice quick podcast. We explained the behavioral economics behind it, and uh, hopefully everyone uh, learned something. Ted, thanks very much for being here. Have a nice day. That's our show for today. Thanks for listening. Until next week, for Ted Michaelis, I'm Doug Coys. That was Debt Free in 30.